everybody welcome back um, I haven't had a chance to get on the lake lately but I want to show you guys something that might help you catch more fish more white fish that is because right now it's a hot season for the white fish and all the ices are thick enough where you can drive the ATV out and you can explore and look at some uh, your maps and then look at some of your your baits that you're using to catch these white fish so when I first started fishing for whitefish, you know, you go to the bait shop and there's so many baits and you want to try this, you want to try that, you think that this will work better. But a lot of time we spend a lot of money buying baits that we don't even use. And a lot of time we waste a lot of money. I'll show you some of the baits that I use, that I bought and I tried. And uh, some work, some didn't work. And here, here are some of the baits that I bought just to give you an example. But as of this week, because I haven't had a chance to go out, I want to show you guys my top five baits that I use that uh, catches fish whenever I go. But there are times where, you know, I have to admit, I skunk out too. And there are times where they're so finicky that they won't bite any lure that you give in front of them. They'll come and look at it, swim around it, they'll swipe the tail at it, and then they'll, they'll take off. There might be a few that you guys have not had and uh, maybe this will help you catch more fish and bring some more fish home for you and your family all right so let's take a look at some of the baits that i have so my number five lure that i would pick of the top five is this one here i use a slider on top which is the the copper john fly go down the line and to a dark sleeper. Uh, there's various colors that you could use for a dark sleeper. But this one here, um, I like this one because it's, it's, it looks kind of like a goby. The reason why it's number five is because it's kind of bulky and big. But the white fish, they like to eat small items, small insects or small bugs in, in the water. So this is kind of big. So you probably would not catch a lot of fish with this. But if you do catch one of this, it's mainly the bigger white fish. Well, occasionally you catch some smaller ones, but the smaller ones, they would likely to bite the top one. Okay, that's my number five. And uh, the dark sleeper at the bottom. To pound the bottom, dig the bottom like a goby, and uh, attract the fish to come to the bait. So my number four is the hook on top, number eight hook as a slider. Going down the line to a Rapala 
jig and wrap and the Rapala jig and wrap is a very good lure because you see how the design of the back fins the back has a plastic fins like this when it goes up it comes back down and it goes all over the place it doesn't stay in one spot so it makes it more elusive and attracts a fish like a goby down there just jumping up and down looking for bait and with the rapala there's a treble hook in the bottom there's two hooks one in the front and one in the back so you put wax worms on all the hooks one here two three four five wax worms on there and when you do that you attract a lot of fish um the front and the back doesn't have to have wax worms but if you are uh, struggling that day and you want to attract more fish and catch more then put a wax worm here wax worm there five wax worms plus that so you're looking at six wax worms in one lure going down this one is my number four because it's a really good lure to catch whitefish somehow whitefish are attracted to gold So my hook here is just a regular hook, but if you have a fly tie kit, you just wrap the hook in a gold string. It works a lot better with this gold here, and I can't seem to get it to focus, but this gold here is the best way to catch them. So this setup, I would call this my golden ticket because it's gold bottom, gold top. And uh, if you want to, you can put wax worms on the top or you could put like a, a shad, a plastic, something on top. Number three setup for whitefish would be a fly on top. This is a different fly. This one has weighted fly on top. The top slider comes down to um, the back, the bottom lure is the storm, uh, baby bass, and uh, I'll put the link in the bottom. But this one, it's very effective because this thing jumps up and down. It's lighter than the mega bass, so it jumps up and down. It looks like a real minnow, real goby swimming and jumping up and down on the bottom of the floor. You could put wax worms up here on top and the bottom you won't have to put anything because uh, it'll do its job by just jumping up and down and then when you see a fish don't jump it up and down anymore slow it down and just pound the bottom a little bit like this it'll look like a goby trying to trying to dig in the ground all right so that's my number three setup so my number two setup is also uh fly on top this is still the copper john fly number 10 size hook coming down to a drop shot with a gold tungsten drop this is a this size here is also a size number 10 as well and at the bottom comes down to a weight down here and this design that I have this is to pound the bottom and cause a disturbance on the bottom floor get attention from the white fishes and if you see it comes down to your o-ring you could change the weight down here if you want this is a uh, half ounce if you want you could change it to a three-quarter ounce drop shot and uh, this is designed to pound the bottom and I will put a wax worm here and also a wax worm on top. And 
There's a reason why I always use a slider. It's because you have more chance of catching a fish. The percentage of catching more fish is to have two lures on the bottom. And that way if they decide not to pick the one on the bottom here, they can pick the one on top. And uh, you'll get better percentage, better hookup. And my number one bait that I have a lot of confidence in is still the Copper John fly hook on top as a slider. And it's actually the purple. The purple color is very deadly. Number two and number one on my list are very similar except different colors on the bottom. And they both are designed to do the same thing as pound. So I got this crazy idea and my daughter might not like it, but we're gonna go put it in her fish tank with her fishes and see how it looks like in the water with these baits. All right, so let's go check it out. How do those YouTubers snap their finger and fishes disappear? I decided that I didn't want to throw the hooks in there and hook my daughter's fishes. She'll never forgive me. So I decided to scoop them out. Here's my number five. Notice how the lure jumps up and down, but it goes all over the place. I'm just jigging it straight up and down. So the lure moves itself all over the place like a real bait. This makes it look more realistic, like a goby. That paddle tail makes it look like it's swimming. And here's number four, the jigging shad wrap by Rapala. Notice how I'm just jigging straight up and it's moving all over the place. And this attracts a lot of attention from the white fish. White fishes are curious, so they're coming to take a look at it. But once they come and take a look at your lure, you see on the scanner, you just slow it down and just jig it in the bottom and make it look like it's a little goby digging the ground. And here's number three. Just like the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper, this one has a paddle tail. So it moves erratically and the paddle tail swims and jumps all over the place, causing a lot of commotion and attention to attract the white fish. Sometimes if the white fish is looking at your bait, just put it back on the ground and just shake it. Make it look like a goby digging in the ground and they'll pick it up. Also notice how the bait twists as it goes down. And sometimes it will twist as it goes up. That's why it's so important to have the swivel between the slider and the bottom lure so you don't have any line twist. I use size 10 swivel to 
smallest you can get and the smallest you can get away with without breaking on you. And here's the number two lure, which is the golden tungsten with the weighted bottom. As you can hear, it's just causing a lot of commotion with the sound. And if you jig it up higher, you'll get their attention, but this is designed to pound the bottom, cause a lot of sand dust. So when your scanner picks up a fish, just pound the bottom like this and hopefully they'll just pick it up. If the whitefish swims away from your lure, just jig it higher again and again to pound, cause them to turn back around and look at your lure. And then you can dig it in the ground again. That's the most effective way to use this lure is to attract their attention. They're back. Sorry, buddies. Thank you for volunteering your home for me to do a little experiment. Yeah. And for what you guys did, I will reward you with some food. Here we go, little buddies. There you go, food up here. So those are my top five lures that I would use out for whitefish. So tell me what you think. Um, you know, do you have some of the lures that I have? Or do you have some combination with which is your top five? Put it in the comment below. And another question for you guys, a trivia question. In Wisconsin here, we have a state regulation. One fisherman can only have three rods at one time. So my question to you guys is, there's some guys that have two rods with a slider on top and another bait behind, and a slider on top, another bait behind. And they're jigging like this, they're jigging up and down. Well, what do you think? Is that a violation of the Wisconsin fishing regulation where you can only have three rods, which means three rods with three hooks, one rod each hook, but here you have two rods, each rod has two hooks. So, but here we are, we have four hooks on two rods. Do you guys think that that's a violation? You know, a lot of guys are doing it and the DNR comes by, the DNR kind of question it too. Let me know if you ever got a ticket for having two rods with the DNR. Let me know in the comment below. And you know, if you like my video, uh, please subscribe, uh, click the bell and also share and let me know what you think the next video should be. I also have an idea to just go fish for whitefish with the rods, but no live baits, no wax worms, just all plastic and see if I can catch my limit with just plastic only. So let me know what you think. Give me some ideas, what you want to see, and I'll try to get some out to you guys. Gosh darn it. That's what happens when you put your bait into the carpet. It's stuck in the carpet. Darn it. The wife's not gonna be happy with this. It's quite a bit of mess that I did. Uh, yeah, the wife's not gonna be happy with this. Another one. 
stuck in the stuck in the carpet again. So I took her fish out and I put in the toilet. Yes, toilet. Here, I'll prove it to you that I put in the toilet. Just kidding. I did.